Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. Scholars, welcome back again to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and a master educator, and I'm here to provide you with the absolute best in art historical content. And if you like it, interact with it. And I'll tell you what, you're going to be happy that you did. <laughs> Thanks. Where are you getting this information? Thomas Eakins is one of America's most respected artists and educators. Today, we're going to talk about his his career as a professional educator and the things that he did to really reshape education and art education here in the United States. So, let's get after it. Now, after three years of studying in Europe, he set up a studio and began to share his knowledge with others as an educator. Although he was very much influenced by his European travels, he would admit that it is well to go abroad and see the works of the old masters, but Americans must strike out for ourselves, and only by doing this will we create a great and distinctively American art. He most notably liked the works of Leonardo da Vinci that he would encounter, because like da Vinci, he also had a gift and a fascination with learning about art and science. Everybody needs to have something to live for each day. This combination of art and science, for some crazy reason, has brought innovation and controversy to both of these artists. Now what do I know? I color for a living. But I can tell you that Thomas Eakins would change the way art instruction would take place. Here's why. Teaching at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art, Eakins expanded the art curriculum to include several unique components, although they proved to be very effective. First, deeply influenced by his time at the Jefferson Medical College, would add cadaver dissection into the anatomical study for the artists. He felt that artists were on the same level as doctors, both having equal rights to dissection of the dead. Humans as well as lions, dogs, cats, and horses were all anatomically studied and used for the creation of plaster casts. Needless to say, the public was very upset by this practice. We almost tore the building down! His next big move was to add a photography class. This was helpful to students, but when he began taking nude photographs of the students as well as himself for the studies, the public was outraged. Could you imagine today an art teacher taking nude photographs of themselves as well as their students for the study of art? It would be the end of the road for that art teacher, I guarantee you. Anyway, I digress. In terms of the photo shoot, this was a boys only thing, so the school let it slide. Sweet cream on an ice cream sandwich! What in the blue hell are you doing? The most radical component that he added was allowing live nude models in the classroom. It was accepted until he began to use the male nude models in his classes that also had female students. Again, the public was beyond outraged at this. After teaching for 10 years, he was forced to resign. Although maybe outside of the realm of appropriate for the time, the processes were correct and the best way to learn to become a knowledgeable artist. It is fair to say that Eakin's ideas would reshape art education. Most of the male art students would quit and begin the Art Students League in Philadelphia, with Eakins as their unpaid instructor for the next seven years. Eakins' most celebrated student to emerge from this period of time was Henry O. Tanner, who was a phenomenal artist that I'm sure we'll talk about at another point. <laughs> I love that story. I love bringing you that story. If you liked it, interact with it. And I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we'll see you on the next one. You have yourself a great day. But you worry when you get old, you know? You're concerned. You're scared.